In this tragic story, she is the most haunting figure. A young girl who heard her mother die, who had to face the killer, her own father, in court. Do you want to keep your jacket on? Jasmine and her grandmother, Anna Frick, say talking about the horror is helping them heal. These last couple of days must have been really uh, emotional. Tell me how you're feeling now that it's over. I, have il I feel a relief that we don't have to go through this no more, that this is over, that we can close our book and look forward for our life with the children. How about you? Uh, same thing. I'm just relieved that I don't have to do this anymore. Jasmine had to testify at a preliminary inquiry about the night she woke to her mother screaming to find her father wide-eyed and panicked. But it wasn't until he pled guilty that she could exhale, knowing that meant no trial. How do you feel that you don't have to go through that? Relieved and happy. Yeah. Were you anxious about it? Yeah, I, I felt like I would have had an emotional breakdown if I had to go on the witnesses stand. The decision to do this interview came after discussions with her counselor and her grandparents, who are now her guardians, as well as the family's lawyer. I've had the chance to talk about my mom, but I haven't had the chance to talk about it and have it, like, you know, public. I can't, I don't know the word. Publicized? Public? Public? Yeah, public? that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and why was that important? I guess just so that people would know who she was, how she was really cheerful, even though she was dealing with so much. Off limits were any questions about that awful night. But the horror of how Alana Frick died, how Shamji struck her several times and strangled her, played out in court. Those details, listening to them again, must have been very difficult. You know, it was difficult for me because I didn't know before what he did to her, all the stuff, and I just, I just broke down. How much pain she's endured before she, she, she was gone. You know, I didn't exactly like hearing what they were saying. So I guess again, I just blocked it out of my mind and tried not to think about it. Did you want to be in the courtroom? I had some questions that I needed to be ans that needed to be answered, so I decided to stay. What questions did you have? Uh, just how it had happened. I was confused, I guess. So I just needed, I, I really needed to know. Court heard Ilana Frick endured years of abuse. Jasmine witnessed some of it. So did her grandmother. I know she hid a lot of stuff from me and she loved him. And she hoped maybe someday that he might change, he will be better, but he never changed. It break my heart, I felt helpless. You were aware of what she was going through, right? That must have been really hard. Yeah, it, it was. Did you ever try to talk to her about it or? Uh, she initiated conversations about it sometimes. She had asked me like a few times if I'd want to live a life without, you know, him. Frick's decision to leave was likely the trigger. Shamji killed her days after she told him she planned to. Your dad, your, your former son-in-law, apologized to you in court. What do you think of that apology? Uh, I don't think much. His apology was only for himself, because from the day one he knew what he did, and also I knew that he do, did, did it, so did the children. What did you think, Jasmine, of the apology? Um, Sorry, I'm just thinking about how I felt. It's okay, take your yeah, time. Yeah, take time. Uh, I guess I felt, it felt weird to like look him in the eye and hear him actually address me because he hasn't, like I haven't spoken to him face to face in like two and a half years. So it was kind of scary. I didn't really like it. So I was happy when he got it over with. If you had a chance to talk to him, do you have any questions for him? I would be uncomfortable. I wouldn't really know what to say, and I just don't want to see him again. The judge has ordered Shamji have no contact with his children while in custody. Before he was let off in handcuffs, Anna Frick demanded he look at them. I did it just to see him, what he's going to miss in for all those years that he's going to be locked. 
let them see and I hope he felt a pain in his heart and soul what he did and what he is gonna miss these children. It's unimaginable what the children are going through. I mean, it's weird to know that somebody you can be related, that you're related to can be so inhumane, I guess. So evil. It's been, well, yeah, it's been emotional. Uh, I've been really angry and hurt and sad over what's happened. And I guess that's really it. I mean, there are times that I felt really happy but there are also times that I just felt really awful about everything. Mother's Day, what's that like for you? Is it coming up? Uh, it's kind of just like a punch to me. It, like it, it hurts kind of just to, you know, look around and you see all these, uh, you know, like Mother's Day posters, like get your mom this to make her happy. And then, you know, thinking about how things have been in the past few years just kind of hurts. When you picture your future, when you're older, um, what do you want to see? Well, I guess I want to see me being happy. Like, well, I am happy, kind of, but I want to be happier in the future, I guess. You will be happy. <laughs> it will take time see, to heal, you know, these wounds, because it wasn't easy those two and a half years. But eventually, we'll go on with our life and we will be happy and maybe get the chance to be a regular kid again. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> She's a so God, good. You're so you know? sappy. She's so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of you, honey. You are. Thank you. <laughs> At her recent confirmation, Jasmine Frick chose her mother's name, Alana. As she said, it was to express how she wanted to go forward in life.